Hi everyone, my name is Brittany J. Jones and I am so excited to be stepping in for Mimi G. She's currently traveling on business and asked me to record the sew alongs for her new Summer Simplicity Patterns 8889 as well as 8890. In this video, we're going to be sewing along to View B on Simplicity 8889 and I hope to bring you that same Mimi G swag that we all know and love. So let's get started. Before we begin, I'll go over the pattern pieces that we need to cut out to make the pants on this pattern. And if you are wondering the types of fabric that would work great, on the back of the envelope there is a list of suggested fabrics as well as the notions and the yardage that you need to purchase. The first pattern piece to cut out is 13. This is the flap. We need to cut out 4 of fabric and 2 of interfacing. Piece 18 is the side flap. We need 4 of fabric and 2 of interfacing. Piece 15, this is our underlap. We need one of fabric and one of interfacing. Piece 14, this is the fly. We need one of fabric and one of interfacing. Piece 19, this is the carrier and we need to cut one. We need to cut out piece 17, which is our side pocket and we need to cut two. Piece 20, this is the waistband. We cut one of fabric and one of interfacing. Pattern piece 12 is the front and we need to cut two of these. And pattern piece 16, this is the back. We need two of these as well. Once you have your pattern pieces and your fabric cut out, you've transferred all of your markings, we can start sewing. The first step for us to do is to apply stay stitching along the upper edge of our front pant. The stay stitching will be done at a half an inch seam allowance. Once you have the stay stitching done along the top edge of the pant, we can go ahead and start working on the left front. Now there was a stitching line that was on the pattern piece for us to transfer. So if you did not transfer yours, you can go ahead and transfer it now. That stitching line will be a guide for us later when it's time to sew the fly. So using a water soluble pen, this is what I use, or you can hand base your stitching line. Let's go ahead and transfer that marking now. Now that you have your stitching line transferred, we can move on to the next step. Still working on the left front, you should have transferred a large circle that's down here toward the end of the fly. We are going to reinforce that by stitching about an inch above it and an inch below and make sure that you stitch right through the large circle. So let's go ahead and do that now. And to reinforce this large circle, I'm lined up with the stitching line. So I'm at a five eighth of the inch seam allowance and I'm just gonna stitch about an inch above and an inch below that large circle. Make sure again that you stitch right through it. I have the left front reinforced through the large circle. Before I go on to the next step, because at the next step we're going to put our pants right sides facing and we're going to stitch between the large circle and the notch. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and finish off my center seam. I just like to have all my seams finished off, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now before we start putting them together. So again, I'm going to go ahead and finish off my center seam right here with my serger. Okay, so I went ahead and finished off this raw edge. Now we're going to put right sides facing. We're going to match up our notches as well as our large dot, pin in place, Now we're going to stitch between this large circle and this notch at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance and make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Now that we have them reinforced between the large circle and the notch, we are going to go ahead and clip the left front only, not the right. We're going to clip it to that large circle that we reinforced. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my scissors here and make sure that you just clip to the large dot. Don't clip through your stitching. Now we can move on to the next step. The next step is to begin working on our fly. 
Our fly is piece 14. You should have cut out one of fabric and one of interfacing. I've already fused my way interfacing. Now we're going to go ahead and finish off this long unnotched edge of it. I'm going to finish mine with my serger. So once you have the raw edge of the fly finished, we're going to go ahead and grab our pants and working on the left front, we're going to go ahead and put right size facing, matching up our notches as well as the large dot and pin in place. Once you have it pinned, we're going to go ahead and stitch above the large dot and make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the end of your stitch. Now that we have it sewn on, we can go ahead and trim this down to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And we're only trimming above the large dot. Now that we have it trimmed, we can go ahead and do understitching and we're going to make sure we have the seam allowance facing the fly and go ahead and do our understitching now. Now that I have the understitching done, I'm going to go ahead and turn the fly to the inside and give it a good press. Now that we have it pressed, we can move on to the next step. The next step is for us to go ahead and top stitch along our marking or basting if you hand baste it or machine baste it yours. I'm going to go ahead and put pins on the outside just to keep the fly in place. And I'm going to go ahead and top stitch following my stitching line. Now that the top stitching is done, we can go ahead and start working on our underlap. So go ahead and grab that and we can start working on it now. For the underlap, you should have cut one of fabric as well as one of interfacing. I've already fused my interfacing. We're going to fold the underlap in half with wrong sides facing. Now we can take it to the machine and we're going to machine baste the long edge as well as the lower edge. Once you have it machine basted, then you can finish off the edges with your serger, pick and shears, or zigzag stitch. So here's my underlap. I have it basted as well as I finished off the long and lower edge. So now we can grab our pants and we can start working on the right front. So above the large circle, I'm going to press under 3 8 of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my iron. Okay, now that we have pressed in 3 8 of an inch above the large circle on our right front, we can move on to the next step. Next, we are going to take our underlap and we are going to pin it to the right front edge, making sure that we match up the large circle. And we're going to take this pressed edge and line it up 1 8 of an inch over the seam line and then make sure that you have the upper edges even at the top. So again, we're going to match up our large circle here at the bottom. Then we're going to take this press edge and line it up an eighth of an inch over the seam line and make sure that you have the raw edges even at the top. I'm going to go ahead and pin in place. Once you have it pinned in place, we can take it to the machine and starting at the top, we're going to baste from the upper edge down to the large dot. Once you have the underlap basted, you want to go ahead and take your left front and lap it over the right. You also want to make sure the large dots at the bottom match up and the left front, it should extend about a quarter of an inch over on the right. So once you have the centers matching as well as the large dots, we can go ahead and take it back to the machine and do a regular stitch right along our basting line. Thank you. 
Now that I have it stitched, I'm going to go ahead and remove my basting stitch. Okay, so I just removed my basting stitch. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lap the left back over the right. I'm gonna grab a pin just to hold it in place. And on the inside, down here at the lower edge, we're gonna grab our needle and thread and we're gonna hand tack the underlap to the fly. So I have my needle here and my thread and I'm just gonna hand tack it together. All right, so I have my fly and my underlap tacked down here at the lower edge together. So now let's move on to the next step. For the next step, on the outside of the pant, right up under the fly stitching line that we made, we're gonna create a bar tack through all thicknesses. If your machine doesn't have a bar tack function, you can just use narrow zigzag stitches right up under this fly stitching line. So let's go ahead and do that now. For sewing on my bar tack, I do have a bar tack function on my machine, so I'm just going to manually do mine. I'm going to put my needle down right by the fly stitching and start stitching the bar tack. Okay, once you have your bar tack on, we can go ahead and put our pants to the side and start working on our flaps. Okay, for our flaps, this is piece 13. You should have cut out four of these and two of interfacing. And I'm just going to put right sides facing. I'm going to pin along the sides and the lower edge. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch in the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, being sure to leave this top edge open. Okay, now that we have the flaps sewn, we can go ahead and trim them down. Now we can turn the pocket right side out and give it a good press. If you need your point turner, go ahead and grab it so you can poke out your corners. Once it's pressed, we can go ahead and take it to the machine. We're going to do a basting stitch at 5 8 of an inch seam allowance across this raw edge. And along the finished edge, we're going to do a top stitch at a quarter of an inch as well as make our buttonhole while we're at the machine. So let's go ahead and do that now. First, let's do the basting stitch. Now the top stitch at a quarter of an inch. Now the buttonhole. Go ahead and do the base thing, the top stitch and the buttonhole on your other flaps the same way. Okay, so I have my flaps done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place them onto the front of my pants. Now I transferred my dots, but I did not draw my line. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a ruler and just connect them. Okay, now that I have the line, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my flap. And first I'm gonna place it so that it is facing up and I'm gonna line up the small dots on my flap to the small dots on the line. And I'm going to put the basting stitch that we stitched at a 5 8 of an inch, I'm gonna put that right on the slanted line. So if we match up our small dots, our line will be right on our marking and we can pin there. 
Now we can go ahead and stitch right along our basting line. Now we can go ahead and sew the other flap on the same way. Now that the flaps are sewn on, we can go ahead and trim down this seam allowance. Be careful not to cut into your pants. Once you have it trimmed, we can go ahead and turn the flap down, give it a press, and then we're gonna top stitch at a quarter of an inch right across the top of the flap. Top stitch the other flap the same way. Now that we have the flaps top stitched down, we're gonna go ahead and form our pleats. So on the inside of our pants, you should have transferred your pleat lines. We're gonna bring these lines together I'm gonna put a pin in. And we're gonna stitch from the top down to the end of the pleat line. So let's go ahead and do that now. Again, make sure that you have your lines together and stitch from the top down to the end and make sure you back stitch. Now that we have the pleat lines stitched, we want to go ahead and open up the pleat. We're going to grab our ironing board and press it flat. Now we can go ahead and baste across the top of the pleat. Now that the pleats are basted across the top, we can go ahead and sit our fronts to the side and start working on our backs. Okay, here are my two back pieces. The first thing that we're going to do is sew a row of stay stitching across the upper edge at a half an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once you have the back stay stitch, we can go ahead and pin our darts. Once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch the darts. When you're sewing your dart, when you get to the end, you don't want to back stitch. Instead, just leave some long threads and then we can tie them in a knot. Now we can go ahead and sew the other dart. Once the darts are sewn, we want to go ahead and press them toward the center. So I have my iron here. I'm going to go ahead and press the darts. Okay, now let's move on to the next step. Next, we're going to go ahead and stitch our front to backs together at the side seams, right sides facing. Before I stitch mine together though, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my edges with my serger. I'm gonna do that for my center seam as well as my inner leg seam on my backs and front pieces. All right, so I've gone ahead and done all of my serging. I have my side seams done. I have my center seam done as well as the inner leg seam done. So now with right sides facing, I'm gonna put my front seam back together and pin the side seam. Once you have your side seams pinned, we can go to the machine and sew them in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once 
Now that I have the side seam sewn, I'm gonna go ahead and press my seams open flat and then we'll start working on the pocket. Now that I have my side seams pressed open, I'm gonna go ahead and put these to the side and grab my side pocket, which is P17. So you should have cut out two of the side pocket and what we're gonna do is on the upper edge of the pocket, we're gonna press under a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I have my iron here. I'm gonna grab my seam gauge, put it at a quarter of an inch, and I'm just gonna press that over. Now that it's pressed, I'm gonna flip it to the right side of the pocket and I'm gonna fold along my fold line. I snipped into the sides of mine, so I'm gonna fold along the fold line. I'm gonna grab a couple of pins just to hold it in place. Okay, from here, I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch along the sides and the lower edges of the pocket along the seam line at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that now. Stitch along the seam line of your other pocket the same way. I have the pocket stitched along the seam line, so now I'm going to trim up here at this corner to eliminate some of the bulk. Now that it's snipped, we can go ahead and turn our pocket to the right side and we can press along the stitching line. Do the other pocket the same way. Now that the pockets are pressed, we can take them to the machine and we can stitch close to this inner pressed edge. So I'm gonna have my pocket facing up and I'm gonna top stitch right along this inner edge. Now that the pockets are stitched close to the inner pressed edge, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my front and back pieces. And I'm gonna find my side seam. Along your side seam, you should have transferred four dots. Two of them are for the pocket and the other two above that are for the flaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pocket Okay, I'm gonna pin the pocket to the other side seam the same way, and then I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna stitch close to the edge along the side and the lower edges of the pocket. All right, so I have the side pockets sewn on. The next step is to begin working on the flaps that will go over the side pocket. So we're gonna go ahead and grab piece 18. I'm gonna set my pants to the side. You should have cut out four of these and two interfacing. So with right sides facing, we're gonna go ahead and pin along the sides and the lower edges of the pocket. Now 
Now we're gonna go to the machine and stitch these along the side and the lower edges at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Remember to leave the top open. Once we have the flaps sewn, we can go ahead and trim them. Okay, now we can go ahead and turn the flap right side out and give it a good press. Now that we have them pressed, we can go ahead and machine baste across the top, the raw edge, at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And along the finished edge, we can top stitch at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then while we're still at the machine, go ahead and put your buttonhole on. Now that I have the flap sewn, I can go ahead and sew them onto the pan. So the same way that we did the other flap earlier, I'm going to put the pocket so that it's facing up to the pan. I'm gonna line up my small dots with the small dots that are on my pants. The basting stitch should be lined up with the stitching line. I'm gonna grab my pins. I'm gonna go to the sewing machine, I'm gonna stitch right across my basting stitch. Now that we have the flap sewn on, we can go ahead and trim it down close to the stitch. Be careful not to cut your pants. Now we're going to press the flap down and then top stitch right along this upper edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you have the flap top stitch, now we can go ahead and pin our inner leg seam together. So with right sides facing. You wanna line up your notches and pin in place. Once you have the inner leg seams pinned, we can go ahead and stitch them at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you have your inner leg seam sewn, you want to go ahead and press that.
Okay, once your inner leg seam is pressed out, now we can go ahead and put one pant leg inside the other, making sure that right sides are facing. So I'm gonna turn one of the pant legs out and I'm gonna put it inside the other. Again, making sure that I have right sides facing. Now I'm gonna pin at the inner leg seam. And I'm gonna pin the remainder center seam together, matching my notches. And continue pinning all the way up here at our previous stitch. I'm gonna pin there as well. So now we can go to the sewing machine and we can stitch our center seam all the way to this previous stitching and then we're going to stitch over that same stitch again just to reinforce it. So let's go ahead and stitch the center seam now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch again right over the stitch just to reinforce it. Once we have the center seam sewn, we can go ahead and sit the pants to the side for just a moment and grab our carrier piece. Should have cut out one carrier. What we're gonna do is fold the carrier in half lengthwise and make sure that you have the wrong sides facing. So first, let's fold it in half. Give it a good press. Now we're gonna open it out and we're gonna fold in the raw edges to the crease that we just made and press those down. Same thing for the other long edge. Fold the raw edge into the crease and press it. Now we can fold it back in half. Now that the carrier piece is pressed, we can go ahead and take it to the machine and we're gonna stitch down both long ends of the carrier getting close as we can to the edge. Now that we have our carrier piece sewn, we can go ahead and cut it into eight pieces that are three inches long. Once you have your eight carriers, we can go ahead and grab our pants and pin them in place. On the outside of the pants, we're gonna go ahead and pin our carriers in place. And I can see my markings through the pants, so I'm just gonna go ahead and line those up and pin them in place. Make sure that you have the raw edges even with the top.
Now we can go to our sewing machine and baste across the top of our carriers. Continue basting your other carriers in place. Once we have the carriers basted on, we can go ahead and put the pants to the side for just a moment and start working on our waistband. On our waistband, we have a side that is unnotched and a side that is notched. On the side that is unnotched, we're going to fold in a half an inch and give it a press. So go ahead and grab your iron and press in a half an inch on the unnotched edge. Now that we have the waistband pressed at a half an inch on the long unnotched edge, let's go ahead and pin it to the pants. All right, so with right size facing, we're gonna go ahead and match up our notches as well as match up the small dots with the side seams. Once you have your waistband pinned all the way around, we can go ahead and stitch it in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that we have the waistband sewn on, we can go ahead and trim our seam down. Now we can go ahead and press our seam up toward the waistband. All right, now that I have the seam pressed up toward the waistband, on the front of the waistband, I'm gonna go ahead and fold it right sides facing onto itself like so. Gonna grab a pin and pin it in place. Same thing for the other side. Fold it right sides facing onto itself. Pin it in place. Now we can take it to the sewing machine and we can stitch the ends together and then trim our seam. Once the ends are stitched, we can go ahead and trim them. Turn them right side out. Now we can go ahead and press the band to the inside of the pants. Once you have it pressed, we can go ahead and grab our pins and we're gonna pin it so that the folded edge of the waistband is about an eighth of an inch over that seam. So go ahead and put your pins on the outside.
Once you have it pinned, we can go to the sewing machine and stitch in the ditch, making sure that we catch this pressed edge while we're sewing. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once you have the waistband sewn on, we can go ahead and press up our carriers. And then we can fold under 3 8 of an inch and pin the carriers down. So now I'm going to go ahead and press them up and then press under 3 8 of an inch and pin them down. Go ahead and pin your carriers to the top of the waistband. Once we have them all pinned, we can go to the sewing machine and stitch them right across the top of the fold. After you have the carrier sewn on, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the hem of our pants. On the inside, I snipped along the fold line, so I'm going to go ahead and fold up along the hem and press that up. I'll turn the pants inside out and fold it up. Here are my snips right here. going to grab my ironing board and press this up. Once you have the hem pressed up, we're going to fold in a quarter of an inch on the raw edge and then press along that as well. Once you have the cuff pressed up and you've pressed in a quarter of an inch on that raw edge, we can go ahead and stitch it close to this pressed edge. Now that we have the cuff sewn, we're going to go ahead and turn the cuff to the outside up three inches. So this is the right side of my pant, this is the inside, and I just turned up the cuff three inches. I'm going to get my seam gauge. So again, this is the pant after it's been sewn, and I'm just folding up three inches to the outside. Now working at the seams only, right where I have my pins at, you can do a French tack to tack this cuff up to the seam, or you can stitch in the ditch of the seam through all thicknesses, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna stitch just a little bit to tack down the cuff. I'm gonna do that for all the seams. So there I stitched in the ditch, and I'm gonna do that for the other three seams. After you have your cuff folded up and tacked along all the seams, we can go ahead and give our pants a really good press. And the last step for us to do is to go ahead and apply our buttons and buttonholes. So following your buttonhole markings, you want to go ahead and create your buttonholes on the left front and also on the waistband. Put your buttons on the right and up under your flaps and along your pocket. Once you have all of your buttonholes made and your buttons sewn on, we're all done with our pants. Well, that's all for the so long. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. Until next time, blessings, everyone. Bye.